We begin our show this week with some news that has brought deep sorrow to the pro-life community. Viewer discretion is advised as the details we will share are quite graphic. As of taping, the Washington, D.C. medical examiner has refused to conduct autopsies on five aborted babies who were handed over to federal authorities by pro-life activists. The activists from the progressive anti-abortion uprising, also known as POW, claim the babies were given to them by a truck driver outside of Washington Surgical Clinic. He was tasked with transporting medical waste from the facility. In addition, the group reports that they retrieved the remains of 110 unborn babies who were victims of first trimester abortions. These 110 children have been given a proper Catholic burial. This incident has led to outrage among many. Autopsies of the five babies currently with federal authorities could determine if their deaths violated the federal partial birth abortion ban or the Born Alive Infant Protection Act, which was signed into law in 2002. Medical experts are saying that the babies appeared to be in their second and third trimesters of gestation and could have been born alive. In the presence of a Catholic deacon, Lauren cut open the box and the red plastic bag inside. We then proceeded to unpack the remains of 110 mostly first trimester aborted children. At the bottom of the box was a clear plastic bag with five more containers, one much bigger than the remaining four. Teresa Bakovanak, founder and executive director of POW, said the truck driver who gave them the babies agreed to do so when he was told the children would receive a proper burial. They were being transported in a large box that he handed over to them to take home. And joining us now is someone who has been following and reporting on this story very closely, Sam Dorman, a writer for Live Action. Sam, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I want to start by just talking through a timeline of how this discovery played out. Where did POW take the remains of these children, and when did the federal authorities obtain them? Sure. Uh, so POW found these, um, I'm not sure exactly if they've said the exact timing, but they had them, and then they were taken to Lauren Handy's apartment, mm -hmm. um, and that's where they were found last week. Um, Lauren Handy and the POW had asked the authorities to come and get them. Um, so now we have a live, they, they gave live action a, a tip and now uh, live action has footage and we've reviewed the footage and experts have reviewed the footage and we currently see that, you know, these are babies who were late term. Um, they could have been viable. They also could have been subject, like you said, to partial birth abortion and um, there's potential violations of federal law. Yes. And the D.C. police have not pressed charges against Lauren Handy or Pow in this case, mm. but uh, Lauren Handy is now being indicted in a different case from about two years ago, and they've, they've brought that back up. Why is that? Do you have any insight into that? No, it's kind of weird timing, right? Uh, the, uh, the indictment was brought basically right around the time that they went and got the fetuses um, after Powell had notified them of that, and it's really unclear as to why the Justice Department is doing that now. We can only hope the Justice Department, you know, since this is a potential federal violations, they clearly have jurisdiction over this, and they should be intervening to um, investigate whether these are, what, what, kind, what happened to these babies. Yes, and have we heard anything from D.C. police or federal authorities as to where these five babies are now? What's, what's happening to them? It's our understanding that they're at the uh, medical examiner's office, and so the medical examiner has so far declined to do an autopsy, so live action is calling for an autopsy. We need to have uh, an independent pathologist review the results and do their own investigation, and then we'd also like to have a uh, proper burial for the children. That's, like, I think the least we can do, mm -hmm. an investigation is the least we can do, considering the state that they're in. Everyone has seen the pictures and how terrible they, you know, the, the, ter the condition that they're in, um, and only imagine what kind of undignified treatment they receive. Right, right. And the reason that the D.C. medical examiner says he won't autopsy the bodies is because he says these abortions did not, uh, they weren't performed illegally. Mm. But could you speak to what the current law is when it comes to the partial birth abortion ban and the Infant Born Alive Protection Act? Sure. What's the law? Is it, tr how can we know that these, these abortions were in fact legal? Well, so the problem is uh, with D.C. law, it's pretty uh, liberal, one of the most liberals in the, liberal in the country. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can basically abort any time, but there's still federal restrictions, like you said. So the partial birth abortion ban um, protects infants so that they can't be pulled out of, you know, pulled partially out of the woman and then uh, killed immediately after that. So there's, and, and in fact, there's one baby that looks like that is what happened to them. Mm -hmm. um, medical experts have said that it looks as though that child had um, had a puncture wound in the neck and then had their brain suctioned out. 
um, which is very hard to, to look at. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the other law, like you said, is the Born Alive Infant Protection Act, which requires life-saving medical care. Um, and this particular doctor, Dr. Santangelo, has said um, on camera to live action investigators that he does not provide that and he's just willing to let them die. Horrifying. So, yeah. <laughs> This is, the conditions are there for any kind of investigation. Right, yeah. yes. And Senator James Lankford, along with other pro-life lawmakers, have just issued a letter demanding that this investigation be carried out, these autopsies happen. Uh, have you heard about anything else that lawmakers are doing to take action on this? Well, so they released a letter, uh, and I think there are more, maybe more letters coming, um, but that particular letter, it was about two dozen members of Congress, and, um, you know, we can only hope that they're in communication with the Justice Department, but this is the Biden administration, so who knows what the Justice Department is going to do. You know, they brought this FACE Act violation, which is um, about, uh, you know, uh, the, the so-called right to abortion that, um, and they're, they're using that to prosecute pro-life activists. Mm, so unfortunate. And uh, could you speak a little bit to how we know that these babies may have survived outside the womb? I know that you've mm -hmm. been in touch with expert physicians on this issue. Right. Well, that's one of the things that we need to look at um, because you can do things with an autopsy to see, for example, if they breathed um, and th they were able to make it outside of the womb. But besides that, I mean, you look at them, they're, one of the babies looks like he's potentially full term. Um, the other one that's really interesting is a baby that was born in call, so it was still in the amniotic sac. Yes. And if, that's po if that is the case, uh, Dr. Santangelo has said that he doesn't actually um, do injections. Usually there's a feticide that's injected. He says, he says that he usually just cuts the cord and lets the, the baby bleed out. Well, you can't do that if, if they're still in the amniotic sac. So there's indications with that, that they, the baby could have been born alive and just left. Mm, so many questions here and so much more that needs to be uncovered. Sam Dorman, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And joining us now for medical analysis is Dr. Ingrid Skop, Senior Fellow and Director of Medical Affairs at the Charlotte Lozier Institute. Dr. Skop, as someone who has dedicated your life's work to bringing life into the world, I first just want to hear what your immediate reaction was to this devastating news. When I um, initially looked at the photographs and the videos, my initial reaction was sadness. Um, these babies were big and they were clearly viable. They could have lived separated from their mothers. Um, um, they looked like normal um, children that I deliver every day in my practice. Mm. Could you tell us how specifically you determined that these babies could have been victims of infanticide or of partial birth abortions? Well, one of the babies, um, a little female, um, the initial picture that looked at her face um, showed very little uh, cranium. It looked as if she might have anencephaly. Um, but a photograph from the back showed a surgical incision into the back of her brain. Um, this is consistent with a procedure that is illegal by federal law. Um, a layman's term is partial birth abortion. The medical term is intact dilation and evacuation. Um, what happens is the baby is delivered uh, feet first to the level of her head, and then an incision is made in the skull. Um, the brain tissue is vacuumed out, and then the skull can be collapsed um, and delivered. Um, the There was a, a large male who looked as if he had no... Um, visible abnormality or surgical incisions. Um, I, my concern with this child is that he was probably delivered by an induction abortion. And if he was not killed prior to the abortion, um, generally that's done with a needle injection into the heart or into the amniotic sac with um, digoxin or some other poison that will um, stop the heartbeat. If he was not killed in advance of the abortion, it is highly likely that he survived the abortion, was born alive, and then was allowed to die by neglect. Mm. And based on what you found, is it certain that these babies could have survived outside the womb had they been given proper care or a chance to live? Um, the, the size of the babies is consistent with uh, probably several weeks, maybe even several months past the point of viability, which is where we expect a baby to survive. Um, there were no obvious abnormalities that would make us think these children were killed because they could not survive. Um, so I think that there is a high likelihood that had they been treated as we should treat unborn children with care, um, that they could have survived 
either gone to term and lived or even lived at the gestational ages in which they were delivered. Mm. And Dr. Scott, we have just a few moments left. Uh, Pro-life groups are calling for the DC medical examiner to autopsy the bodies so we can know exactly how these children have been treated. From a medical perspective, can you share why this absolutely must happen? There are very few limitations on abortion in our country. Most people are unaware of that. But even so, there are some limitations, and for abortionists to flagrantly violate the law in order to kill children that are capable of feeling pain, um, generally these late abortions are for the same elective reasons as early abortions. Um, this is analysis and um, possible prosecution is crucial for the ethical well-being of our society. We cannot allow people to kill these babies wantonly without regard for the law. Mm, could not agree more. Dr. Ingrid Skopp, thank you for looking so closely at this situation from the Charlotte Lozier Institute. Thank you, Prudence.